Hello, and welcome to Bathory Retrospective Part 1. We're going to talk about what I feel is one of the most influential and overall greatest metal bands of all time, Bathory. So in this video we're going to talk about the origins and the different members that accompanied Quarthon, the founding father of the band, and also we're going to talk about the record itself, the 1984 self-titled Bathory. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Bathory originated in Stockholm, Sweden in 1983, and they were created by Quorthon, the lead frontman, vocals, and guitarist. At the time, Quorthon was about 17 years old, and he was looking for like-minded musicians to make up a band. So he went to like a record store or some kind of place like that and he hung up some musician wanted ads up on the billboard. He had said that he was starting a band that would be sounding like the exploited Charge GBH, Motorhead, and Black Sabbath. Eventually two musicians showed up. One, a bass player, Hanoi, and a drummer named Jonas Eckerland who actually eventually ended up becoming a director. He did that movie Lords of Chaos. He did some Candlemass videos too. But before he did all that stuff, he was actually the first drummer in the band Bathory. According to Quorthon at the time, he said it was very difficult to get in touch with people in Stockholm that either wanted to play the style of music that he was interested in this weird mix of like punk and really almost kind of like hard rock fast speed hard rock with motorhead you've got that slow doominess of black sabbath that hard rock metal sound he also said that there were just a bunch of musicians that were already taken they were already in bands or just weren't interested so he was having a lot of difficulties with finding members, but eventually he did get these two members and they also knew each other prior and were in a band together. So they already had some chemistry there, um, but Quorthon didn't know either of them. So this was a new kind of kinship. So right from the get-go, Bathory's main intention musically was to play faster than any, anyone, heavier than anyone, and just more extreme than any other band that's out there. And that was like Corthon's main goal when starting this band. Corthon wasn't particularly super into the NWOBHM movement as much as he was into the British kind of oi punk music. And he was looking for a combination of sounds that he just didn't quite hear yet. Something that I've been mentioning over and over is this. He listened to a lot of punk. He liked Motorhead. He liked Black Sabbath. Apparently, according to him, he wasn't really well versed in metal. He only knew like a couple bands. The band put together a practice space in the basement in Stockholm. And that's where they first began practicing together and getting used to their playing styles. I guess the drum kit was just like made up of all sorts of different drum sets. The bass never had new strings ever put on it. And um, Quorthon, of course, he had a bunch of stacks and a really nice guitar that he spray painted, uh, painted black just in time for their first ever practice together. The trio starts decorating the rehearsal space with you know satanic imagery and you know upside down crosses chains that type of stuff and they start working on what cover songs they want to start working on i guess over time quarthon wasn't really pleased with his guitar work enough where he felt he was a 
prolific guitarist, lead guitarist, and he didn't really feel he was much of a vocalist. So he was still looking for maybe like a vocalist and a second guitarist at that point. Not, you know, ever thinking that, hey, eventually he was going to be the front man of this band. Some people do um, respond to his ads that he hung up on the billboard or at the record stores. And they come to try out, and I guess most of them were freaked out by the whole imagery of the satanic stuff in the basement and just the overall sound of the band super raw fast crazy so they really just had no luck getting anybody else to be in their band plus from what i understand quarthon wouldn't let you be in his band if you permed your hair or liked bands like iron maiden so he's really picky about who he wanted even being in his band Apparently, all the noise that Bathory was making in the basement was coming out onto the streets and people could hear it pretty much anywhere. It was really loud, and I guess they were kicked out for the noise. Apparently, they rented some kind of practice space. That's what that was. So, they need a new place, and at the end of the May 83... There was a summer house about an hour away from Stockholm that they were allowed to play at. Apparently at one point they found a way into the wine cellar at the summer house and this became a bunch of drunken trying to play music and crazy hijinks driving around in a high speed boat going in between um, Finland ferries across the water at night. They were super hammered and they were trying to practice songs and they were just falling over drunk. So with that being said, they were out of that place and had to go back to the city. This time the three of them are in Vastberga and they end up landing this practice space that's underneath this industrial building and it's like a huge giant catacomb. But there was a catch to it. The band would only be allowed to play there after working hours in the city. But the reward would be they could play as loud as they wanted to and there would be no one else there. So it was like a really good setup for them. Bathory's earliest lyrical content is a mix of kind of that angsty punkness with a lot of Satanism, very over-the-top type stuff. The other two members of the band weren't particularly as fond of these lyrics as Quarthon was, and this started to cause differences of opinions right off the bat with the band's original lineup. The two members were hoping that they could get rid of some of the more horror themed and satanic lyrics and go in a more of a maiden and priest vein and Quarthon simply said I don't know anything about those bands I don't listen to them so I really can't do anything like that he even stated that them walking down the street together they looked completely different from each other you had Quarthon who was wearing just a uh, spiky leather jacket, black leather boots, and just no badges or patches. And you've got Jonas with giant hair and just casual everyday type clothes. And you had the bass player wearing band shirts, sneakers, he was covered in patches. So they all kind of looked like total opposites of each other. At one point, the two other members of the band, not Quarthon, go on a vacation, summer vacation, some type of thing like that. And this is where Quarthon goes out and gets some other musicians to try out some of the music that he's been trying to push on to the rest of the band that they've kind of been messing with. But as mentioned, weren't loving the imagery and even maybe the style. Wanted to go for more of a heavy metal sound. Quarthon explained that when he hung out with the original two members of the band, it was more about just having fun and that the band wasn't super serious or anything like that. And that it was an afterthought a lot of the time. Having these newer members to just kind of mess around with 
actually made it a little bit more serious for Quarthon because they really were enjoying the stuff that Quarthon was showing them. Quarthon goes on to record four songs in a live rehearsal room trying to get the best quality sound he could just to kind of see how Bathory would sound realized by two other members who were into the same kind of music as him. Also during this time, Corthon had a part-time job at a little independent record label called Typhoon Records. So when he found out that that record label was putting out a metal compilation and one of the bands backed out, he was quick to jump on peddling his band to the label saying how they'd be perfect for the album. He showed them the demo that he made with the other musicians and explained that this isn't the actual core band but it was just some songs he decided to record at the time. The label decides that they like the songs enough and they're going to allow Bathory to be on the album. The original trio record two songs for the album, Sacrifice and The Return of Darkness and Evil. After the release of the compilation of Swedish metal bands, it's sent out all over Europe and the UK, and eventually fan mail starts pouring in, and it's all the same. They want more Bathory. There was only one slight problem. Only three, four weeks after the huge sales of this Swedish Metal Attack compilation, Bathory had disbanded and were not really a band anymore. Quarthon was contacted by the label, a small indie label, and was asked to please record an album. Bathory just had to do this. Quarthon gets a hold of his old friends who recorded the demo with him, and one of them was able to help him out and play bass for him on the debut album. And the drums were handled by a friend of a friend. And they all met one one day and rehearsed just one time, right before they had to jump into the studio and make this album. Bathory was under a super low budget, so they had to record in a basically a garage type studio with a four tracker and there was just boxes and auto parts everywhere. They could only fit one singular drum bass drum in there. It was just a very small studio. By the end of it they spent about five to six hundred dollars to get the whole recording done so they were under a very strict budget which also was the same case for all the artwork he had to do. It was all screen printed and hand drawn type stuff and you'll notice certain things like necromancy is spelled with an S instead of a C and that's because of running out of letters due to money issues. Quarthon also decided not to put any members names on the back due to the fact that it wasn't the actual core group and he didn't know who would be in if he did make another album on that one so he decided to cut down confusion and just leave out photos of the band and names. Originally the album came out with a yellow goat on the front and a yellow pentagram on the back. Now, when he sent these away, he envisioned more of a gold color, and when it came back, it was more of a canary yellow, as he called it, and he thought they looked horrible. They also didn't have the money to try it again, so they just switched to what is now the classic black and white goat. The debut releases and it is an instant success and it just continued to fly off the shelf sold out over a thousand copies right off the bat and was continued to be repressed throughout the whole of the 80s and the 90s and even to this day it is definitely probably Bathory's most remanufactured album there is so with all that being said I think it's time we jump out of here and we start talking about the actual 1984 self-titled 
Bathory. Well, here we are in 1984, and we're going to be talking about Bathory self-titled, and it is definitely a must-own, for sure, metal album. Now, when I started delving into this um, research about this album, I started learning about the influences on this, and I said to myself, Holy cow, I never noticed this before, but it the drums really did start sounding like Charge GVH drums to me because as a teenager, I grew up listening to Charge GVH and like Old Exploited and Discharge and all those punk bands. I just loved those bands. And it was crazy to me that I never put two and two together before that the influence was really heavily in that um, type of genre. It was just, to me, I thought it was just this really dark and kind of um, rough around the edges, early black proto-metal type album. So, it was really fun for me doing the research on this album because I learned a lot about his influences, Quarthons, and uh, come to find out it was a lot of bands that I really loved. Um, so, let's jump into the tracks. Um, you've got that really awesome opening with storm of damnation which is definitely an ode uh you know um, an homage to um black sabbath's you know opening on their self-titled uh, first release black sabbath and um they said that they just loved the sound of the storm they just couldn't cut it down so that's why it's like three minutes long it's because they just loved the way it all sounded the atmosphere for it. it really sets the mood and i remember the first time i put that on the turntable and i was like man this just keeps going and going but i love it i think it really sets the tone and then like hades just really just kind of blends right in and you're just you're off and running I love Hades. I think it's a fantastic song. I think every song on this album is fantastic. I think he is just in his element with all this stuff. Uh, the, just the riffing in that song is really cool. I just think he he doesn't give himself enough credit on this album for his, his riffs because they are really good. I really love his work on this. Reaper, really cool song, mid-paced kind of. I just love the vibe of it, really creepy. I love it. Um, Necromancy, uh, yet again, just another really cool song, really funny lyrics. I always laugh when I, I you know, I hear the lyrics on that song. They're pretty, uh, pretty over-the-top Satanism, but, you know, this is what this was. It had a lot of that punk spirit. It was there to be loud, abrasive. And what's more annoying to Christians and just like older people than rock and roll? And that's really what he was doing here. Was some crazy rock and roll. Sacrifice. Awesome. Super fast. Really punky, oi type stuff that he liked. Just really good. Really good way to end side darkness or side A. So we flip the record over. Eh, side evil. And it starts right off with In Conspiracy with Satan. And I just really love this song. I, at first, when I had bought the vinyl, I thought that that was side A. So it started off with that. And I'm like, damn, this, this guy is pretty satanic right off the bat. I was a lot younger, so I was kind of like, still like, oh no, Satan, uh, scary, you know, what does he do in the basement at night, you know, but... It's all very tongue-in-cheek, but it's it's fun. It's definitely really cool. Um, but that's a really fun, fast song with some really good riffs. Um, Armageddon, that's another one I love. Awesomely fast riffs. Bass just really chugs along with that one. You definitely can feel that Motorhead vibe. It's just really good. Love it. Raise the Dead, that's another great song, of course, like all of them. It's mid-paced. It is just probably my favorite song on the album, I'd say. It has that feel that I just love. It's just very mid-paced. It's got that very dark sound, and uh, it's scary. You know, it's got that scary uh, bathory um, mis mysticalism about it. I really like that one. And then we end the album with War. 
another just blistering, fast, brutal, awesome riffs, just ripping and shredding the whole time. I mean, the longest song on this album is like three minutes and 40 seconds. These songs are fast and they are not very long, but they are brutal. Every bit of it is brutal. And then the album kind of ends with this really cool, like weird pagan tribal type thing, the Winds of Mayhem. And I think that just closes out this amazing record that I can't say enough great things about. It's influenced so many different genres of music. It's just iconic with its um, cover. It's iconic with its legacy of like the the stories that you heard when you were younger like kind of just like what this guy was really about some evil guy in a basement like collecting dead animals you know just a really culty kind of album that before the internet was absolutely probably terrifying for people to, to pick this thing up and look at but i think it's fantastic and I'm lucky to have purchased at a, it was like a uh, record sale, just kind of like an a, a old Legion, um, you know, veteran Legion. And this older guy had a whole box full of these weird old metal records, and I was looking through them, and I'm like, wow, look at all these insane records. Celtic Frost, Bathory, every Bathory album was in there, uh, Creator, just really insane music. And... I was just grabbing it up left and right and he was just going oh my gosh you like some really intense music oh man i remember my father was there with me and he was even kind of like telling him like yo your your son's into some pretty insane music and my dad didn't care he doesn't know what he's looking at so he just moved on from that but i just vividly remember that even in like the year like 2000 that record was definitely leaving an imprint on people that it just it's iconic and it's scary the cover you know it's got that imagery that it's unmistakable it's definitely satanic that being said though i really hope you guys enjoyed that uh amount of information i gave you about this album and the creation of it and just you know the things that quarthon has gone through up to that point to make this record I think in a lot of ways we're lucky we even got it. Just the way everything fell into place for that uh, particular record. And with that being said, 1984 is over, but we're going to be returning very soon. Hail Quarthon. <laughs>